Hi everybody, Dr. Joe here, and today I'm going to teach you how to finally solve those recurring issues of tennis elbow you've been facing. Not only that, I'm going to tell you the major problem and what you've likely been getting wrong as you've been stuck in this cycle of aggravate, recover, aggravate, recover. So I'm a physical therapist and I specialize in golf and tennis. I work with everything from amateurs to the professional athletes, and tennis elbow is an issue I see constantly. And before I go on to the number one thing you have to know, please hear me out. Avoid cortisone shots. See, the problem with cortisone is it's bad for collagen synthesis, which is what you need to heal an injury. So all the research out there says that when you inject tennis elbow with cortisone, you get a short-term pain relief, but worse outcomes down the road. So please just avoid it. It's, it's, it's going to cause you more trouble than, you, than it's worth. And I'm going to cite that study in the comments of this video so you can be sure uh, it's, it's a true piece of information. Now, the number one thing you have to know when it comes to tendonitis type issues, tennis elbow, this includes golfer's elbow as well, is that tendons do not have a blood supply. So they lack blood supply. Now, what that means is they don't have this constant supply of oxygen and nutrients coming into the tendon and this garbage and waste product going out. That means the cells are not going to turn over and heal themselves the way that they would when you have a muscle issue like a pulled hamstring. So you have to treat things differently. So tendons heal themselves or remodel or get stronger by tenocytes being active. Those are just the cells of a tendon. And the only way to get those cells active is to put stress on the tendon itself. So when you look at the research on tendon issues, what they see is if you take two groups and one group, they do everything with having zero pain and you tell the other group to have a tolerable amount of pain or a three to four out of 10 uh, on a rating scale type of pain, that the group that has some pain actually recovers better and faster. And this is because that stress going into the tendon allows that tendon to go through the remodeling process, rebuild itself, and become stronger. So you need that when you're facing something like tennis elbow. Otherwise, what happens, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, is you end up in this recurrent cycle where you irritate the tendon. You rest, you allow it to recover. Then you irritate it again. You rest to allow it to recover. Well, it's not working. You have to do something differently. So what we want to find is a tolerable stress level and work on how to build that. And I'm going to get into more details on that toward the end of this video. The second thing you have to know when it comes to tennis elbow is that it's a what they call a common tendon. So if you look at the forearm, there's a bunch of different muscles, and they all come together and they share one tendon, as you can see in this picture. But... Of those muscles, the one that is typically to blame is called the extensor carpi radialis brevis, or ECRB for short. So when you want to remodel that tendon, you have to know how to stress that specific muscle. And if you don't stress that muscle, sometimes you're not going to get the right healing. Or if you're doing an activity that you're not sure why it's tolerated, it's probably because that muscle is not as involved. That leads into the third point of this, which is you want to train that muscle with eccentrics. And we're going to take a little bit of a closer look at what eccentrics are. Um, and the reason that they work is because they preferentially target the tendon. So um, let's get into how you do those. An eccentric muscle contraction is tension on the muscle or the tendon as that muscle or tendon is lengthening. For example, if we're doing a squat, when we're lowering it in a squat, that's called the eccentric portion. We're essentially trying to control things as they lengthen. Then when we come up, it's the concentric portion, and those muscles are shortening. So when we preferentially train eccentrics, we can do it like this. So you can take a dumbbell. You're going to hold it in your hand. You're going to lift it up or even help it up with your other hand, and then you're going to slowly let it lower down to the eccentric portion of the movement. You can help it come up slowly lower it down the eccentric portion. And we do these very slow controlled eccentric motions because they target the tendon better. So back to some of our previous points, what we would do is we would do this exercise to a discomfort level out of three, maybe four out of 10. And then we'd monitor the response. We'd make sure that the discomfort stays at a three or four out of 10. 
if it amplifies and the next morning it's really painful, then that was too much. You need to bring the weight down, bring the repetition numbers down. If it was tolerated well and it's sore the next day, but tolerable, then you can probably stay there. Establishing the baseline is the hardest part. Once you get that baseline established, then you can build on it. You go from 10 reps per set to 12 reps to 15 reps. Then you can drop the reps right back down, but increase the weight. You can lengthen the amount of time that it takes you to lower your wrist. So all of those things are ways to manipulate this to put the right amount of stress on that tendon to, again, increase that tenosite activity, resynthesize the collagen, and strengthen that tendon overall. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is that there is actually a specific tool built to target tennis elbow issues as well as golfer's elbow. It's called a Therabar. I'm going to link it down in the comments of this video. Um, it's coming up on your screen now. But the reason this is so beneficial is because the way to use it, it's going to put that eccentric load on the muscle. You're going to work on controlled lengthening contractions again. Once this video ends, what you're going to see are two videos. Those two videos are demonstrations of my favorite two exercises to use with the Therabar. And if you just start with those two and you find that baseline threshold I talked about earlier, and you work on gradually building either in resistance, a number of repetitions, sets, or total volume, then you're going to be on your way to finally solving your tennis elbow issues. If you have trouble with any of them, please leave a comment below. Remember what I said earlier about the cortisone and its issues. I would, again, strongly recommend avoiding that if you can at all costs. And as long as you keep these things on mind, you'll finally be on your way to solving those issues as opposed to back on YouTube looking for a different solution two months from now. Thanks, good luck, and if you have questions, leave them below.